A friend of mine had a uh, 2007 MacBook Pro, which um, is getting a little bit long in the tooth at this point. It's 10 years later, uh, but the computer overall works okay. The screen turns on, the fans work, the CPU's fine, the display card's fine. A lot of times in this model, the display, the, the GPU in it would overheat and start breaking. Uh, but in this case, everything's fine except for the hard drive. And a lot of computers, not just laptops, but a lot of computers after five to 10 years, hard drives start failing because they have spinning disks in them and a lot of uh, very sensitive parts. And especially in a laptop where it's moving around and jostled all the time, this particular laptop was actually driven around in a car quite a bit. Uh, because of that, the hard drive will fail and then you start losing your data and it's just a bad situation. And that's what happened with this one. I figured uh, since it's been 10 years and I actually own the same model, I, I have pictures of it and I, I actually have done the hard drive replacement twice when I had my own and I also put in more RAM and everything. Um, I figured I'd record it because I don't think I've recorded this particular model before uh, working on it. I've done iMac and I've done the iBook and I've done MacBooks and all kinds of things, but I've never done the old aluminum uh, MacBook Pros, the ones before the unibody. And this one's a little special in the way that you take it apart. And I actually have the uh, directions for how to do it from iFixit up on the screen. And uh, it, it takes maybe 20 to 30 minutes usually. And you need a few special screwdrivers and a little patience. But it's, it's actually pretty straightforward. And uh, the funny thing is I wish, I really wish Apple still made a few laptops more like this one where you could replace almost any component within 20 to 30 minutes. Even their computers like the, the Mac Mini, which is more expandable, those are really hard to get apart nowadays because of all the custom parts and the screws and the kind of screw heads they use. This one's pretty straightforward. Uh, so the first step in, in replacing it is, of course, close it. Um, and then you've got to flip it over because all of the screws are on the sides and the bottom. Uh, the funny thing is it's you actually access everything from the top, but you have to unscrew it from the bottom. Uh, so the first step is you take the uh, battery out by pushing these two levers down and on this battery you can even see it's it, I, I'm not even sure if the battery works I know it turns on when the power is connected but the battery may or may not be working uh, these you can buy replacements for maybe a hundred bucks uh, but it has these it has three screws on the memory bay cover and then there's also screws on the inside back here you can see one two screws there uh, there's also four screws along the back here and then there's screws on this side, and then again, there's screws on this side, and all these screws have to come out. So uh, I'm gonna pull these out. I have my, my bag of all of the different screwdrivers I use with, I have a pentalobe screwdriver for the iPhone. I have small Phillips, small flathead, uh, hex drivers, keys, all kinds of different uh, tools in here that I use for iPhone and Mac and iPad repair. So I'm gonna find my small Phillips head screwdriver. It's got to be in here somewhere. Uh, I got a lot of pentalobes here. And actually, there's a flat head. So this is the problem sometimes when you have too many screwdrivers. It takes you 10 minutes just to find the right one. Oh, here it is. Uh, so here's one of my small Phillips screwdrivers. And it fits nicely with these. It has a little grip on it. If I did this more often, I'd buy a much nicer set of tools. Another thing is these screws are teensy tiny. So one thing is it might be good to record the process. Uh, I've, done, I've done it enough times uh, looking at this guide on iFixit. Um, I've done it enough times that I kind of know the sizes of screws, but especially if you're only doing this once. Um, I usually have a paper towel, which I'm putting back here. I have a paper towel that I put things on. So I'm going to put these screws up here. And I usually go in order the first ones in the top left, and then I go across, and then I go down and across. That way I can get the, the screws back in in the right order. So I'm going to take this screw out. And for these screws, the easiest way to get them out is to unscrew them and then stick your fingernail under the screw head and pull it out. So there's two and three. And if you're just replacing the memory, uh, that's all you need to do to get to the memory. You take those three off, and then you pull up on this little door and there's your memory. Uh, so I'm going to take that out. Uh, it looks like there's there's also some charred uh, kind of dust. Must have been used in a smoking environment. So I've taken out those three. Uh, I'm going to take these four out as well while I'm back here. And I forgot to mention there's also there's also uh, two screws on top of here that you're going to need to pull out. And I think those are actually 
uh, hex screws or uh, what a Torx drive. So these screws along the back are a bit longer. They have a little blue patch of paint on them, you can see. So take these off. And I know in a lot of videos, and even I've done this in the past, I'll speed up the video uh, during this part, but I, I like actually leaving it the same speed so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. Uh, so there's two screws here in the front of it. There's a screw here on the battery bay. There's another screw back here in the battery bay. Yeah, those are really hard to get because they're so tiny and in a weird place. All right, and then I need to get these two screws, and these require a, uh, a hex key or a Torx bit, which I think this might be. That one's actually a little small, but sometimes you can use a very slightly smaller size. I think these are T6 or T8 or something like that. Uh, this one is a T5, so these are probably T6 because this this is a little loose on it. So I'm going to take these two off. And it looks like these are longer longer screws as well. Take that one off, and now I got to do all the ones on the side. So bear with me. Um, might be a little hard to see it with the little camera I have, so I'll try to do as best as I can. Okay, so that's the right side of the bottom at least. And then I'll do the left side as well. That's one. Two. It's interesting, I'm seeing uh, not only did this computer have FireWire 400 and FireWire 800, uh, it also had a USB 2.0 port and a one of the Kensington security slots. I uh, I realize now like a lot of the newer Macs don't have those and a lot of newer Apple products in general don't have the Kensington security slot where you could lock your computer up to your desk. Um, I'm guessing that I've never used one and I'm guessing that Apple doesn't think that it's a, a core market that really needs that. Uh, so at this point I should have all the screws off. There's Again, there were three here covering the door. Uh, there's two here that are uh, Torx bits, T6, I think. And then there's one, two, three, four along the back that are taller Phillips heads. And then there's one, two, three, four on this side, and then the same on the other side, the port side. Uh, so now that I got all those screws out, it's time to flip over the laptop and the rest of the work's gonna happen on the other side. Uh, so also I'm gonna scroll down in the iFixit page. So I took off the RAM shield, and this is these pictures are a lot easier. If you're if you're ever gonna um, do this yourself, you probably want to have this page open up because uh, you can click on these images and see them a lot larger. You can really see where those screws are. This video is hopefully helpful, but uh, the the guide has really good pictures. Took out all these. Yeah, these are T6. It says here, and then I took out the Phillips head on the port side. Oh, and I I'm glad I'm looking at this guide. I also missed these two screws. There's two on the back that Apple kind of snuck in there, so I'm going to go back on this side and take out these two in the back. There's one on the back there. I'm going to put. Uh, usually, I go right or left to right, but if there's if there's screws like these, I'll put them kind of where they are in relation to the where the computer is when I'm taking apart on this this. Uh, sheet of paper towel that I have. Also, if I were doing this more often, I'd probably get one of those magnetic screw holders because it's a lot easier to make sure that you don't lose screws that way. All right, so now I got those two. 
and I got all the ones on that side. And this, this step is probably the most critical part and part where you could definitely go wrong if you do it the wrong way. Uh, there's a bunch of clips holding in the keyboard and front cover, the top cover of this uh, laptop. And you need to get all the clips out. And when you pull up, you don't want to yank the thing really hard because there's actually a ribbon cable. Uh, so I start at the, the top corners and I just kind of pull up with my fingers. Technically, you could use a spudger tool to do this too. Um, I find it's easy enough just to use my fingers. And I just pull, uh, work my way around the case. And if there's... If there's ever anything that's really catching, you might want to uh, you might want to make sure you didn't miss a screw. Uh, but the clips are st are stuck, and you got to kind of yank them out a little bit. And in this case, I'm hitting a spot where there's a lot of a lot of uh, tension. So I'm wondering if I might have missed a screw. I'm going to take a look back again at the backside and see. Doesn't look like I've missed anything. It must just be really tight on there. I noticed that there's also a little crack in the front corner, so I'm, I'm wondering if this laptop might have been dropped at some point. Uh, so if there is something like this, you just want to kind of work it slowly and gently, going around the case, making sure you don't break or bend anything. Man, that's tough. Hold on. I'm actually going to get out my spudger tool because uh, when it's this tense, I don't want to uh, break anything or bend the cover too much. The older laptop is, the more chance you'll have a situation like this where it's just not coming out. So I'm going to take the spudger tool. Now, the nice thing about the spudger is it's a plastic tool that won't damage the finish on your computer. Technically, you could use a metal spudger if you're really careful, but um, I don't like taking that risk and causing the computer to have scratches on it. So I'm going to work it into this joint and see if I can get it to pop out. There we go. So it was just a clip that was stuck. All right, so now you can see that the, the top is off of the laptop. And if I pull it up a little bit and look underneath, I can see this, this one cable in here. I'm going to take that, take that tape up just so I can pop this off. I'm going to use my spudger again. Uh, anything on the, the logic board, you want to be careful not to break any circuits or shock them. Uh, technically, if you're doing this professionally, you'd, be wanna, you'd want to wear an ESD wristband, but I'm not doing that. And it looks like that's out. Okay, so now I can take the top cover and inspect it, make sure there's nothing broken on it. Looks good. Uh, you can see that this is that little connector. It's one of those flat connectors uh, used a lot of times in laptops and small computers. Uh, so now with that out of the way, you can see the layout of the computer. There's the memory here. Uh, the CPU is underneath somewhere in here. I don't remember. I think it's right here. You can kind of see the circuit layout. There's two fans. Uh, if the fans ever go bad, you can also replace them. Uh, this one's looking a little dirty, but uh, nothing too bad. I'm actually going to take my air spray. Uh, air spray is good to have for a variety of computer um, uh, cleaning purposes because it's it's easier than having an air compressor and it's also more controlled than having an air compressor in your basement or your workshop or wherever you work on your computers. Uh, so I'm going to take this and I'm just going to knock a few areas of the computer with it. Also another tip for air spray is don't ever hold down the trigger because A, It'll make the can freezing cold because of the reaction inside. And uh, B, you're probably going to break something in your computer. you got to do small, short bursts. Okay. Uh, so now with that out of the way, I can start working on the hard drive. So I'm going to take a look again at the iFixit instructions here. And... Uh, also note that uh, when you're putting it back together, they have a note about the DVD clips. Uh, in the area where the DVD drive is, there's actually a few, uh, a few clips in there that the, the top case has to snap into. So whenever you're putting it back together, be aware of where those are and, and try, not to, try not to leave those unclipped. So now that I have the uh, top case off um, and I fix it again, it has a nice close-up picture of that area where you need to pry up with a spudger. 
Uh, now I need to take off the hard drive cable, and that's an orange ribbon cable. Uh, you can see it right here. It kind of comes over and down in a 90 degree turn. So again, I'm gonna use a sputter tool just to uh, be a little more safe, and I can kind of pry this up around the edges. With these kind of plugs, you wanna work them up from one side and then the other. You never wanna just yank on one side because that can bend pins inside of it. Uh, so once you do that, it pops off. And now the bottom of this cable is actually stuck with some adhesive to this area. This is the express card slot. Um, I remember back in the old days, 10 years ago, uh, it's funny that that's now a considered old. Um, they had these express card slots, which were kind of like PCI cards for laptops. You could put uh, video cards and network cards and, and storage cards and things in there. Uh, but nowadays it's all been uh, obviated by USB-C and things like that. So now that I have this cable free, I just pulled up the adhesive really carefully. Uh, the next step is to remove this hard drive tray, and I'm going to look again at the iFixit instructions. It says um, you also want to loosen the adhesive uh, connecting these two things here. So I'm going to do that with a spudger, kind of slowly work my way up. I don't want to break this uh, break this actual cable, and it's it's relatively easy to do it, so you don't seems like this one is actually more adhered to the hard drive than most, uh, probably because of how old the computer is and how it's been used. Uh, so this is a little tricky. Oh boy. There we go. You kind of got to get, get a corner on it, and then once you get that, you can start getting the rest. Man, it's really stuck on there this time. Sometimes that'll happen, and then you just kind of pray and, and hope that you're not going to break a connection in there. All right, so that's up. Now I'm going to work these two little cables out. So now I get a little uh, a path that I can kind of pull these out. Uh, make sure that you note where these cables are run. They kind of jump in here because when you put the top case on, you don't want to smash the cables and break them either. Uh, so I have those up and out of the way. Let's look at the next step is to remove these two uh, connectors here or two uh, torque screws. They're again T6. Uh, and I'm going to use my, I think this is still a T5, yeah. I have a T5 um, a Torx driver. So I'm going to remove one here. And uh, generally I would actually go find my T6, but since I'm doing a video, I'm not going to walk out there and, and do that. Since I'm going to be putting these right back in in a minute, I'm just going to set them here next to the holes where they go in. Eee, don't go under the computer. Uh, so there's one here, and you can't really see this in the video. There's just two things here, and you'll see when I pull up the bar uh, what they do. There's another one here. And also, apologies, I don't have... Uh, I'm set up for kind of video podcasting, but I'm not set up all that well for technical things like this. I don't have a camera with a bird's eye view. All right, so I took out those two, and now I can kind of pull this bar up. This bar just retains the hard drive in this area, and the hard drive is, is actually mounted to the computer using some shock mounts, some rubber shock mounts. Uh, so now I can pull the hard drive out. I'm just gonna gently pull up from this cable and make sure that it's all out. And you can kind of pull up on one side, and then it pops out from here. And now, uh, being careful not to mess up these cables, you have to kind of rock this back and forth a little bit to get it out. It looks like there's still some adhesive on here. That's that's the most I've ever seen it hold. All right, so here's this bad hard drive. Something's wrong with it. It's 120 gigs. That's pretty small. What I'm going to do, because, um, because it's 2017 and we have the new technology, I'm going to put in an SSD. Uh, I found this for like 90 bucks or 80 bucks or something. Uh, you can actually get them cheaper on Amazon, and I'll put a link in the description. Uh, it's the SanDisk Ultra 2. It's not the best SSD, but for a computer this old that only has SATA 2, you don't really need the best and fastest SSD. You just need one that will saturate this computer's bandwidth, and, and this one will. Uh, I've used a bunch of these in the past on older computers, and they're way cheaper than the, the best ones, and they're also uh, a lot more compatible. I've never had an issue with these, whereas some of the new SATA 3 drives I have. Um, and of course, you can't do things like PCIe or anything like that because uh, these computers don't have that kind of port. So to get this out, I gotta break the seal here. Let me find my scissors. 
I've been setting up my desk over the past couple of years to be kind of my one-stop shop for all the little tools I need when I do these things. It's nice to be able to have my big monitor uh, and all my cameras and all that kind of stuff in this area whenever I need them. So here's the new hard drive. It's a SanDisk Ultra 2 SSD, and this one is 240 gigs. Uh, sometimes they have the 120 gig on sale for like 40 or 50 bucks. That's if you're just replacing the hard drive and that's all you need, then this is a pretty good deal. Um, even so, the 240 gig uh, doubles the capacity and it's also quieter, it's lighter, it's probably half as light as this one, uh, and it has no moving parts inside, which means it's a lot more rugged and durable. Should hopefully last a lot longer. Uh, so this has, I think again, T6 screws, so I'm going to use my, my T5 driver yet again. And uh, these screws are a little funny because they got these rubber grommets on them. So here's one. Uh, the other thing is, uh, when you're doing this, so I should actually do it this way, I always line up the hard drives next to each other uh, using their ports as my guide so that I, when I'm putting them back in, uh, I put the screws on the right, in the right places. So here's one screw. This was in the front right corner of the hard drive. Or in the video, it's front left that you're seeing. Uh, so I'm just going to put this one in there. And on this new drive, the screws are actually, you got to torque them a little bit harder. All right, then I'm going to do the next one, take it off of this drive and put it on the new drive. And that's two of the screws. All right, screw that in. I think I said, I said it takes 20 to 30 minutes. We're about 20 minutes in, so hopefully I'll be able to get this finished and not be a liar. Ooh, that screw's really tight in there. I'm guessing that uh, one of the times this computer's dropped, it must have really kinked some things because some of these screws were you need a lot more torque than the computer I used to use. Of all the different MacBook Pros I've had over the years, this was one of my favorites to actually work on just because you had access to everything easily. Uh, a lot of the other computers, you'd have to flip it over, do something, flip it back over, do something else. This one Apple designed to have all the components right here in front of you, uh, which is a nice thing for do people doing repairs. Uh, so goodbye to the old hard drive. Uh, you had a good run, 10 years, and you were jostled around quite a bit. Hopefully this new hard drive can give another three to five years. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, something else will probably go bad on this computer before the hard drive. So I'm going to screw that guy in there. And here's the last screw. Of course, the last screw is going to be hard to get in. There we go. Screw it in. All right. So now I got these screws in. Um, and I'm going to orient this the same way. So this drive was like this. And so I'm going to put this one in and whoops, I just knocked my camera there. Sorry. Uh, so now that I have the, it there, I'm going to uh, put it in the same orientation, get the plug on first. So I'm going to get that in there, guide it on correctly, push it down. Okay. And then I'm going to, I'm going to, before I um, route the cable, I'm going to put the hard drive in place. Uh, so everything in the opposite order. I make sure that all these rubber grommets are seated correctly. And I'm going to put this uh, guide bar back on top like that. Put these little screws in. Again, they're T6s and I'm using my T5. Sorry about that. Anybody who's OCD would probably not like that. All right, there's one. And here's the second. Okay, once I get those in, I need to reroute the cables, make sure that they're stuck on as much as they can. If, you, if I were a professional again, there'd be a few differences here. I would actually use some new adhesive uh, to make sure that this is routed. Uh, so this is a pinch point here. I want to make sure that these wires are, are both seated one on top of the other in there. Uh, and then I can make sure that it's, it's stuck in the right place on this new drive. And you can also see there's a little bit of a gap here because this new drive is actually much shorter than the old drive. I think this one's seven millimeters tall. The old one was 9.5, so that's okay. That's not a problem. 
All right, and then I need to, of course, plug in the hard drive. If I don't do that, nothing's gonna work. Uh, so this is can be a little tricky the first time you ever do one of these. It's a funny connector, uh, but you kind of get it seated over the middle, and then you push until you hear a little pop, just a little pop. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna go back uh, to the iFixit guide and look a little bit in reverse, uh, make sure that I'm doing everything right. So here's the rest of those instructions. It's shown where the grommets are. So I'm going to make sure I got those cables in the right places. It looks like the next thing is to put the uh, trackpad and keyboard button back down, uh, the top cover back down with that little cable. So I'm going to grab it, uh, and I just kind of set it up against the screen here. That's the easiest way to do this. And then I'm going to push this down into that little connection point. And actually, this tape is not doing anything anymore. Uh, again, if I were a professional, I would probably have this tape as well, and I'd, I'd put a new piece of tape on. But since I'm not, uh, and since this computer's 10 years old and I'm doing this for a favor, um, I will just push this on and leave the tape as is. The tape also has a little bit of that smoky sludge on it, so I'm going to leave it. Okay, so that's that. Make sure that everything looks okay in here. Make sure there's nothing that's, that's pinching anywhere. And then you, you kind of put down the case and kind of start guiding it in place. You'll feel it as it goes in. Of course, I'm also feeling that this computer's had some abuse. Uh, so now I got this part in, and then you start kind of working around the edges. You gotta push it until it pops everywhere. At this point, I need to start putting these screws back, and I can see that since this computer's been uh, through the ringer, it's flexing a little bit, and I don't like that too much. So I'm just going to try to make sure that I get as many clips as I can in. start putting these screws back in. I'm going to close the top. That's going to help me hold down the, the top side. And I'm going to start with these side screws and do both sides. So let me grab, where'd that go? And here's the ones on the right side. I think the side screws are all actually the same size, which is convenient in case you mix them up. Two on this side. Three, and this is the fourth. Again, I apologize for the camera angles here. Don't have a setup for this kind of thing since I only do it once every year or so. This one's by the power cable, MagSafe. Another thing that's gone by the wayside is Apple's been updating its laptops. It's the third one in the big blank space on the left side. This is right where the hard drive is actually. And there's the fourth one. So now I got the ones on the sides in. I'm going to do the ones in the back now. So turn it this way. Let me get this old hard drive out of the way. And here's one. And the second one is on the right side of the back. Or the left side if you're looking with the Apple logo up. 
Now I'm going to start doing all the ones on the bottom. So flip it over. Same orientation we had earlier for so that my muscle memory can uh, help out here. I got the four tall ones first. There's one. Two. These are all, you kind of don't feel them touching until you get into the last couple threads because uh, these actually seat pretty deeply inside the computer to hold the top case down and back. That's the third one, and here's the fourth one. I'm actually glad Apple uh, kind of kept the style for a while. Uh, the iBooks at this time had a horrible system where you had to pop off these little rubber feet, and underneath were the screws. I always ended up ruining those feet and have to buy new ones, and it was like you had to wait for them to get shipped to you. It was always a bad deal, and a lot of people ended up with missing rubber feet. Um, so I'm glad that they didn't do that for the pros. All right, so I got those. I got to get these two on the inside, the two smallest ones and most annoying ones to get in. There's one. And here's the second one. If you forget these, then you can start having the the front to uh, pop up around where you have the trackpad. And that can be really annoying to have the trackpad be popping up. All right, so now I got these uh, torque screws again under the memory access door. And I'm gonna use my T5 driver to drive in the T6 screw. Another, another quick note, uh, I haven't mentioned it yet, screwing in all these screws. When you screw in a screw in the computer, uh, in the factory they have machines do this uh, sometimes, and other times there's humans, uh, but they torque them to a particular specification. It's kind of like a car. If you've ever done car work, uh, when you're putting in lug nuts, you don't want to over tighten them. And if you do that, you can either strip the threads on it, which is really bad because then you need an entire new rotor assembly. Uh, or you can do things like over torque them so that uh, the wheel actually doesn't sit correctly. Uh, so when I'm working on the computer, what I'll usually do is I'll tighten up a screw until the point where the screwdriver starts to catch, and then I'll just tighten maybe a quarter turn, maybe less. Uh, that's usually a pretty good rule of thumb for, for tightening computer screws. Basically, if it's ever hard for you to tighten a computer screw uh, or loosen it up, then you've probably over-tightened it. It shouldn't come out super loose, but you shouldn't have to, to pull too hard. Uh, so now I'm going to put the memory door back on. And that goes in like this. You can actually see there's there's a little holder here and a little retainer here. This retainer goes in there and that one goes in the memory slot area. Put that down and then I have three screws left on here. Here's one, whoops. These are tough too because you can't really get your fingers in there. Again, if I were a professional, I would likely have a uh, screwdriver with a magnetic tip so that this would be a little bit easier. It's easier when you're doing work like this. You have to be careful if you have magnets, but um, you'd have a screwdriver where you can just kind of touch it to the screw and then lift the screw up with the screwdriver and then place it in place like this. I actually have one of those somewhere, but I don't have it out for this video. So you have to see me suffer through holding these screws like this. You kind of have to get lucky with the way that you stick it down with your finger. All right, and it looks like this is the last screw. The other nice thing about using uh, something like a paper towel or something white, I put all my screws here, and at the end, you shouldn't have any remaining. If you do, something's wrong, um, and you can kind of turn on your computer at your own risk. I have had that happen before, but usually not. Okay, so I got this last screw, and it's really being tough. Of course, it's the hardest possible location because there's this little connector here on the one side and little thing over on the other side. There's just no way to get into here. I think last time I did this on, on one of my computers, I actually used the magnetic bit. So another, another thing that I do sometimes is you kind of throw the screw down there and then use the screwdriver to kind of poke it into place. So that's that. Um, that's all the different screws. All of them are torqued pretty, pretty decently. And I have the new hard drive in, so I'm going to put the battery back in here. 
just for completeness sake. Even if this battery, I'm not sure if it works, I'm pressing the button, there's no lights here. So I'm gonna flip over the computer and I'm gonna get this, this uh, kind of yucky looking old, old cable and plug it in. Make sure I get light. So it looks like I have a, I have a green light, so that's a good sign. At least something's working inside this computer. And now I'm going to turn it on, and I'm going to adjust uh, adjust my camera here so that you can actually see. I'll turn it on, and we'll see what happens. Hopefully, if everything went well, I think we'll see a, a flashing uh, folder with a question mark or something like that. Of course, it takes forever. I also just noticed that the uh, the old eyesight cameras they used to use had a square bevel around it. Um, Newer ones, of course, are integrated with the displays on your phone and your iPad and stuff. Uh, so it looks like I got that uh, flashing question mark. That's actually a good sign. I can now get the original CD, slip, slip it into the uh, drive, which, oh yeah, I forgot on this computer, it's actually on the front. Uh, this is that vintage. Um, usually the this I'm used to the slot load on the right side, but uh, these old aluminum ones had it on the front, and so did the titanium MacBook Pro. Uh, so everything's good here, and uh, next step is to install an OS or restore from a, a known good state on a time machine drive or something, and that's all you got to do.